So let me explain what this paper is. Okay? So this paper is going to be pro a project that we are going to do every single unit. So you will get used to this project. It's worth 10% of your grade, but almost every single time you get a 100%. This should be an easy 100% that can boost all of your guys' grades. So let me basically explain how this works. Now, there is an essay question on this paper. It is italicized. If you will please star this question on your paper. Star it so that you know for sure where it is. Because I don't want to hear, I don't know what the question is. Okay, now, this question. Evaluate the extent to which differences in politics between 83 and 1800 caused contention in America. That is your goal that you are going to do. Now, first off, what type of essay is this? Not so typical. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Okay, what type of A push essay, as in for the AP exam, is this? The causation. Causation. Okay. Okay. So this is a causation essay. So on the left side of your chart, what do you put at the top? Cause. And on the right side of your chart, what do you put at the top? Effect slash consequences, whatever word you prefer. Now, from this point, this is step number one. The first thing that you do is you fill out this chart, okay? So, th how many should there be on each side of causes and consequences? At least. At least three, okay? Three causes and three consequences. From that point on, you are now able to do whatever you want to answer this question. Now, let me explain how this works. I know each of you guys have talents and things that you're interested in that are not necessarily writing an essay, okay? So, what that means is that whatever your passion is, you can do for this project, okay? Now, down at the bottom, I gave several examples of possibilities. I'm also going to show you a couple of examples that students have done in the past, okay? So, for example, I had a student last year that the question was the causes and consequences of World War II. So, this person did a poster, and I will tell you this person went extremely above and beyond, so even if it seems like it's an impossible task, don't worry, I'm sure you'll do fine. Uh, so this person had a great-grandparent that was in the war, and so what they did is they found the battles that their dad part or grand great-grandfather participated in, and then they did the causes and consequences of those battles, okay? And they put this on this poster. So you can pick a specific thing in this. I'm not talking about what you would put in an essay. Let Last class, we have one person that only wants to do Republican motherhood. As long as you can come up with three causes and consequences, that was a cause of political contention. If you only want to do Hamilton versus Jefferson, you could do that too. That's a very, like, Hamilton musical thing. That's fine. Whatever you feel passionate about, you get to do. Another example is this person made a, a little bowl in pottery class. And what they did is they took Mosh Posh, and basically what they did is they took all the causes and consequences, and they put them into this little bowl. Okay? So that's what they did for their project. Now, one of the most popular things that people do are going to be art projects. I'm going to switch these to your desk. You bet. You had stuff there. I didn't want to disturb you. So, a really popular one that people do is art. So this person did effects of Native Americans in the 1800s. And so this person created this picture. And it was about, basically, and we'll learn about it, they put kids in boarding schools to teach them not to be a Native American anymore. So they created this picture. Now, what's really fun about this project is that you guys really get to explore your talents that you might not even know about yourself. This student in particular had never told anybody she likes to draw. She'd always done it for fun. She'd never taken an art class. And when she did this, this was the first time she'd ever done an art project before. And she came in to me and she's like, I'm sorry it looks so bad, I don't have any training. Okay? Now this student is now in AP Studio Art because of this project. 
I'm not saying you have to have that big of a transformation, but you're really going to be able to explore your individual talents. Um, this person did Japanese internment. So they found a picture of Topaz internment, which is the internment camp here in Utah. And they created this picture based on that. And in this person, it was propaganda in World War II. So this person took several different propaganda examples, created a collage, and then painted over it another example of propaganda. Okay? Art is one of the most popular ones that people do. Children's books were really popular last year as well. Um, the only two things that you really can't do is you can't write an essay because I'm already reading 133 of them and I really don't want to read another one. And you also can't do a PowerPoint because the one time I did PowerPoint, I had 73 PowerPoints submitted and reading the 73 PowerPoints with the same stuff on it is super boring. So now you can be more creative, okay? Now examples of some things that I have students doing in some of my other classes. I have one student who is making a bunch of cookies, and on each cookie, they're going to decorate it with a cause and a consequence. Um, I have one student who's really into uh, ballet, and so she is going to create a ballet that answers these questions. Um, we have one group that's a drama group that they are doing a drama performance. Uh, we have one girl, this one's really unique. She does makeup tutorials for like costumes, and so she's going to like split her face in half and have one side be the causes and one side be the consequences. Whatever you're really passionate about, you can do. Uh, now, you can do this in groups, okay? And I will tell you in a second, there's a little asterisk, your groups can be up to four people. You can do partnership, three people, four people, it's up to you. But I'll explain that there's a little bit of a stipulation and it's a bad thing that usually happens with people who do it in groups, okay? So there are two things that you majorly need to know about this project. Number one, and I would write these down so you don't say, Miss Ray, I forgot what you asked me to write, okay? The first thing, this should take approximately one hour and 15 minutes to two hours to complete. So one hour and 15 minutes to two hours to complete. Now, why I say this, okay? Now, I'm sure you guys have done projects before that you have worked hours on, and you are so proud of this project, and you turn it in, and then you see somebody else work like 10 minutes on their project, and they get like a good score, right? And you get really frustrated, and you're like, well, why did I even bother working? This prevents that from happening. So the thing I would advise you is effort. So let me give you an example. So this student, to this picture, Took her four hours to do. Okay? Now, on turn in day, we always have those students who forgot to do the assignment, which I'm sure is going to be none of you, right? Yes. Right. Okay? So, when they forgot, they grabbed out a piece of paper that was lined. They put it underneath their notes, which you guys think I don't notice. I do every time. Okay? So, they put it underneath, and what they did for their project is on this lined piece of paper... They drew a circle, they did a frowny face, and they wrote, uh, Indian schools are bad, they make me very sad. And they turned it in. Okay? Now, when I gave them a very, very poor score, they came in and said, but I did a picture, and I did a poem. I fulfilled the requirements, right? Do you guys see how there's a little bit of a difference in effort? And if you say, but she'll never know if I put a lot of effort into something... Don't worry, I know. I can tell if you spent five minutes on it or two hours on it. It's pretty obvious to me. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the first thing I would say. So again, that time limit is to give you an estimation. Now, the second thing, and this is in particular for the group people, if you're wanting to do this into a group, understand that just because you're in a group does not mean that you get to cut your times because you're in a group. So for example, if it takes your group one hour to do it, and you have two people in your group, and you're like, oh, I'll just work 30 minutes, you'll work 30 minutes, and then we're done, right? No, in a group, it should still be an hour 15 to two hours of work each. Why I say that 
is because I always will have a group that says, you just do your own thing, I'll do my own thing, we'll work half the time, and then that adds up to what it should be. You should be putting as much effort in as everybody else. So there's no advantage time-wise with being in a group. It's not going to make it go any faster. It's just some people just work really well in groups or want to do it with their friends. Now, we're going to do this for every single unit. You might find your little niche that you're really passionate about. I had a group of four boys last year. Every single time was a video. And they wanted to put on YouTube, and they have like two views each. But they were really, really into doing this video, and they did it every single time, and they were so proud of it. I just had a kid the other day walk by and be like, did you show them our video yet? I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, it's a totally well. It's on YouTube if you really want to go see it. So What's it called? It's, it's under, it says not so typical assignment. They did one on World War I and World War II. Uh, the World War II one, I will say, is funnier. They wanted to show the class on World War I, and then they thought it was really funny and nobody laughed. And that was like one of the worst days ever. <laughs> they were so sad. Um, but anyways, so if that's what you're passionate about, then that's what you're passionate about. You can have people in your project that are not in my class. So if you have friends that you want to include, uh, if you have people in a club or whatever, that's okay too. They can be in the project. Just know that they don't get credit for it. So we had a group last year that was half my class, and they invited some people from Pickett's class to help, and they were like, oh, so where's my credit for the project? It's like, no, it's an assignment from my class. You can't get credit for Pickett's class. So just let you know. Yeah. Different period works fine too. So if you want to cross period, that's fine, as long as they're okay with it. Okay? Does anybody have any questions on how this assignment works? What was the second thing right now? I don't know. Just, if you're in groups, just put in the effort. Yeah. So then can we show whatever we do to a class? So no, you won't be presenting, and here's why. We have a lot of people that will get very personal, or they will create a thing that they don't want to share. Um, I had a student last year who, she really was into Taylor Swift, and she and her mind, I mean, we probably all do it when we're sitting at home, we pretend that we are the next Taylor Swift, and we like sing songs because we're totally good at it, right? So she was a songwriter. She knew she wasn't very good, but it was her passion. And so, and she was so embarrassed, she wouldn't even record her face. She actually recorded the wall when she was singing it because she was so embarrassed. She was like, please don't show this to anybody. I'm not going to, um, unless you want me to. So when I have a truly exemplary project, I usually ask and say, hey, do you mind if I share this? And if you say no, you say no. Um, it's really based on you guys, because I know some of you are going to be showing your talents that you are really shy about, and I don't want to have to force you to present it. Uh, oh, and I remember now the second thing I need you to write down. If your project does not explicitly, as in word for word, say your causes and effects, you write a paragraph telling me what they are. So again, if it's like a visual, so like this is really popular with paintings and stuff. If you have one of those, all you have to do is write down for me the causes and effects. So this is a popular for drama performances, Ballet performances, anything like that where it might not explicitly say it. Yes? Um, so you said we could get pretty um, – we could be uh, more specific. Like we could, we could do a more specific cause and effect. Like as long as you have three causes and three effects and it's political contention during this time. So, right. So what I, my question is, um, do we have to ex explain – if let's say I was doing Japanese internment. Okay. Would I have to explain three causes and three effects of Japanese internment? Well, if your topic is Japanese internment, yes. Right. But if you were way more specific and you did topaz, and you could spot, talk specifically about topaz. Three not the causes topaz. and effects of topaz. Of topaz, topaz. exactly. Cool. So, yeah, so if you're doing, like, Republican motherhood, it's three causes and effects of Republican motherhood. As long as it was some sort of a source of political contention. Yeah. Yes. So if you give me those like, separate paragraphs, is it just one paragraph? One or two, as long as you tell me what the cause and effects are. Uh, and how it relates to your project as well. Um, the only time it was actually this Indian boarding school project. I don't know. The question was cause and effects of World War II, and for some reason she did Indian boarding schools. She just got it really wrong, right? So you just have to tell me how it relates. Because then when I asked her for the paragraph, she's like, oh, well, it doesn't relate. Yeah, well, I know. Um, anyways, so... Uh, write the paragraph, can be specific, anything else I'm missing? Does anybody have any questions? It is due October 12th, that is next Friday, October 12th, next Friday, 
at 11.59 p.m. You can bring it in in person. You can submit it on Canvas. You can put it on YouTube and send me a link on Canvas. Please try to submit it on Canvas alone because it makes it a lot easier to grade so yours doesn't get lost. Yes? We have to turn this paper. Yes, this paper does get turned in as well because I have to make sure that you fulfilled the requirements. Any more questions before we get started? All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, get your uh, 